In today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through my installation of a tankless hot water heater. And this is a Lanai, here's the instructions. Um, I'm just gonna follow the instructions and kind of walk you through how to install one of these. The first step is to decide where you're going to mount it on the exterior of the house and how you're gonna get a gas line to it. So this is the non-condensing exterior model. In this case, it really made sense to install an exterior model because the house was built in the 1950s and there was no space for a water heater to begin with. Okay, so to start out with, I went to Harbor Freight, bought some pipe wrenches, went to Home Depot and bought a bunch of uh, black pipe or steel pipe. This is three quarter inch. Got a bunch of one inch and three quarter inch um, nipples. Anything shorter than like 10 inches, they call it a nipple and they have a bunch of lengths. So I just got a whole bunch of those and I'll just return what I don't use. Got all the keys and all the other parts that I'm gonna need. And pipe thread sealant. This is the Rector Seal T plus two. High recommendations there and shut off valve to go with the unit. And this is a brass gas valve, three quarter inch. So whenever you're working on your gas meter, um, we wanna make sure we're shutting off the gas that's coming from the ground. So this is coming in. There's a valve right here. I'm gonna put my crescent wrench on it. Turn it, hopefully, down. Okay, and once it's in the horizontal position, that should be off. And you can tell on this one, you should be able to lock it out if you wanted to. So this is the gas coming in on this side. This is the gas coming out. I'm going to be adding a T on this one inch black pipe here and having a run go that way towards the hot water heater. So the T will reduce to a three quarter inch here. Um, it is important to note that there's different um, size requirements depending on the length and the uh, BTUs required by the different components in your house. The only things we have on gas in this house is the furnace and now going to be the water heater. So next I'm gonna go inside and burn off the rest of the gas at the furnace. If you had a stove, it'd be easier to do it there, but our stove is not gas. Okay, so this is the only other gas appliance in the house. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat way up and get it to turn on. Heat turn on, tried to burn the fuel, and it ran out of fuel. I'm just gonna get back to you. There, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay. Start by trying to disconnect all of this so that I can get a T in here with a nipple there and a longer piece or a nipple there. Um, we'll see how well these come apart. They've probably been that way for a long time. Okay, so I finally got this piece that I cut off from uh, a 
adapter that fits onto the gas meter. I ended up cutting it to get this thing off. So I had to order a new one from Supply House. It looks pretty similar. Uh, very similar actually. The gaskets are a little different. So we'll test it and make sure it actually works. Make sure to soap and bubble that really well at the end. Um, just started lining up the other pieces. Uh, one thing I'm concerned about right now is that this elbow down here for the one inch going over to the furnace is, I know there's a piece of cellophane over it, but it's uh, really close to the house here. So making that turn, I'm gonna try to get the T under this piece of siding here so that I have space to turn it. Uh, it's just one thing I noticed. It's probably gonna make this a little more difficult than it should be. I recommend this Rector Seal T plus two. Just make sure whatever you use is approved to use on natural gas. Go ahead and re apply the seal of this pipe dope on here. Make sure we work in nice all the threads. And I think I'll use a crescent wrench to tighten this up since this fitting has a attachment for a crescent wrench. So I left the attachment kind of loose uh, down here where the gasket is. And that's gonna allow me to make sure that I can turn all these fittings up here. Use two wrenches whenever possible here to get the get them tight. So I'm not worried about this connection yet, just worried about this one. So from what I've learned so far is you always want to start from the source, tightening there. So that feels pretty snug. Two wrenches. Watching this now, it was not ideal how much I was moving the meter. Eventually, I put wooden blocks underneath the meter to hold it in position. This helped to prevent the existing piping from moving around. So I just got it kind of one turn further than I originally thought, which I think is a good place to stop. Because you don't want to have to turn them back. Is getting the right nipples to fit. Kind of sizing these so that the T junction is going to ride right along the bottom of this piece of siding here. And then it's going to run nicely over there to the water heater. That's okay. Looks about right. So it's getting the one inch 
one inch in from the street, and then three quarters here for the uh, water heater. Um, the water heater, it has to be three quarters there. It's not that long of a run. I did a little bit of research, but it seemed pretty simple that it was gonna be three quarters. Is so close to the house I don't know how they got this thing in here before ended up taking a piece of the siding out just so the gas line can run straight I'll end up slipping some sort of a moisture barrier to cover up the drywall here uh, later and make sure this gets painted I ended up starting from where this goes under the house for the furnace working my way up. This three quarter is not actually attached, it's just here for leverage to hold this in place while I was turning these other elbows on. And now I'm up to here. This is the last one, I'm gonna try to bend it on top of this piece, which can still swivel on the gasket. So I'm going to end up putting another shutoff valve near here um, and then run the pipe behind the fence there. So what I did is I started laying it out just to see which sizes I need. I think these are uh, four foot sections, this is a ten foot section, another four foot section to get to the hot water heater. So next I'll go ahead and put the shutoff valve here so that I can bubble test everything here um, with the gas on and make sure that there are no leaks in the system to here before I keep moving on so that I don't have to come back to this spot. Okay, we're gonna put this in the off position. I should see the ball valve. You can see the ball valve close there. All right, now we're gonna test by turning the gas back on here. And I'm just gonna bubble all these joints as well as these old joints since they got messed with a little bit and just make sure everything is leak proof. Just want to make sure that I get everything, every seal covered. Still 
We're missing some spots in here. It says to uh, clean up with water and a rag. You're not supposed to just leave this stuff on there. Nope. So right there you can see a leak. Good demonstration. So I'm gonna have to try to tighten that up. Hopefully. Um, I'm actually not super surprised to see one there because I did kind of have to break that seal to get this off. But I'm gonna go ahead and test everything else before I shut it back off. Come back and get these get more supports but just something to hold it for now kind of temporarily and give it support So we got our run from the meter, kind of along this bottom piece of siding to an elbow. It's gonna pop out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna have it go up to the gas connection on the meter, or on the heater right here. So the instructions for this Renai say that you can put a union on. If you put the union on, they say to put it above the valve. Um, I've seen online a lot of people put the union on below the valve. Don't think it really matters. It's just an easy way to disconnect the unit if you needed to do that in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and put the union on per the instructions and put it on right here at the heater. It it we'll just screw this on for now I will end up doping the threads on here but I don't think you're supposed to dope this metal face it's just two, two metal faces that are uh, machined to fit together like that so you're not supposed to dope that part but I will dope those threads and then these threads later I just wanted to get that on for height measurement right now. And then the next thing I wanted to do here is measure about how far out this nipple's gonna need to be counting the elbow. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of dry fit uh, the rest of this stuff and get a tape measure. And then I'm gonna mount the unit about where it needs to go before I get all these things fitted. This, I got this hooked up and then I got a ball valve here for a shutoff at the unit. Then on the wall, just got a longer nipple just to get it off the ground a little bit to make it easy to do the plumbing. And then down to a T here, there's going to eventually be a five inch nipple down here with a cap on it as a trap for debris. Uh, that's required by code on most of them. So we're just going to kind of measure to make sure that this distance out from the house is about right. And then I'm going to get the unit mounted before I actually hook everything up and make sure it's in the right place when I mount it. Okay, I went ahead and got some just blocks here to level out the depth of the siding on the side of this house. Um, I kind of marked out where center is gonna be. This is the gas line right here. So just using a level, uh, just use a level to kind of mark out where everything was gonna be from this gas line coming up. Trying to get everything in line and make everything plumb and level here. Um, it does look like my blocks could probably shift this way a little bit, but it shouldn't really matter because the brackets are quite a bit smaller than those blocks. So the blocks will stick out a little on one side more than the other, but that's fine. Okay, so I went ahead and just put one screw in there for now, just temporary. The whole thing's hanging on that screw. And that's gonna allow me to line 
this gas pipe up here. You can see it's not actually attached yet. Everything in here is super loose. Um, might end up popping that out just a little bit more. So it's a good thing I'm testing this now. Um, so the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the water heater to the wall and level it. Make sure it's nice and square. Okay, so I've got the threads doped, but I left the metal seat. Uh, both seats are faces with no dope on it. So, we'll go ahead and position this. Just gotta use both hands here. All right, so now we've got everything set up here, and now I just got to add the trap for debris down here. So, nipple and a cap, pretty easy. Much easier to work on these things when they're not right next to a building or in a tight spot. Alright. Alright. So there we go. Final picture again with no water lines or electric yet, just the gas. So I'll go ahead and close this. All the way. So that's closed. 
And then I'm gonna test this line and test all these joints here to make sure they're good. And we just got the two three quarter um, supply lines coming in. So I'm gonna put these elbows on them to bend them up so that they come into this area. But first I need to install this Renai valve kit here. So in this valve kit comes with cold water with a clean out valve and a shut off valve. And on the hot water side, you've got the clean out, the shut off and uh, pressure relief um, that needs a separate pipe installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and show you how to do that. It does say right on here, it says cold and hot. So similar to other plumbing fixtures, hot is on the left, cold is on the right, which is the way I brought the supply lines in here. I'm gonna use the same T plus two. Um, it says right on the back that it is safe for potable water, hot or cold. Um, so it seems like a good use for it. sure not to get any of this stuff inside the lines. I'm trying to keep just that bottom thread clean. Now we're gonna put in this pressure relief valve right here. Okay, um, so next we're gonna install these three-quarter, three-quarter male adapters. So it's got the thread here and the barbs there for the pecs. So these are gonna go in like that to each of the hot and cold. Okay, so we got the adapters both uh, wrenched in. And now we're just gonna attach pecs here, pecs B with a uh, crimp setting after I do these bends. Okay, so we got these on. It's kind of tough with the three quarter inch, so I used a hair blow dryer to kind of heat it up a little bit. Um, so it's not really cold out, but it's not warm out. Went ahead and got these on there. These are the clamp style pecs for the quick clamp system. And this is the go, no go gauge. So you try to slip this on, oops, for three quarter. That's uh, technically that's a little too tight. That one's just about perfect. Last, I just got to hook up this piece of PVC fitting. So basically, if there is a pressure relief, you want that hot water to just get blown down here. So I'm just going to put a pipe. I think it's supposed to be about three to four inches above the ground. It'll just go down here. It shouldn't be doing that often, so this is just for emergencies. All right, so there you have it. All the hookups except the electrical are done.